This is part four of the Rocky Mountains. Zion National Park. The sheer, vibrantly colored cliff and canyon landscape of Zion stretches across 229 square miles of southwestern Utah. The nine distinct layers of rock found in the park are accented by traces of iron, creating an array of red, pinks, whites, and yellows, as well as flashes of black, green, and purple. More than 200 million years ago, the land here was a sea basin, but tectonic forces thrust the land up and rivers and wind carved the winding canyons. Fossils of she sea shells, fish, trees, snails, and bones have been found embedded in the rocks. There are plenty of live animals here too, including mountain, lion mountain lions and ring-tailed cats. And along the north boat fork of the Virginia River is a spectacular gorge where the walls of the canyon rise 2,000 to 3,000 feet. Normally I'm not a mountain person, but that one I really like. <laughs> it looks gorgeous. Canyonlands National Park. The wide open wilderness of sandstone canyons in southeast Utah's Canyonlands National Park is the remarkable product of millions of years of rushing water. The Colorado and the Green Rivers have shaped this landscape of precipitous chasms and vividly painted mesas, pinnacles, and buttes. The river met, the rivers meet and merge at the amazing confluence in the heart of the canyon land, dividing the park into four distinct sections. In the north is the island in the sky, a mesa that rises more than a thousand feet above the rivers. East of the confluence is the Needles, a landscape of grassy valleys dominated by banded pinnacles. The isolated western area of the park is the Maze, so named for its labyrinth of canyons. The final section, Horseshoe Canyon, is known for its rock art and spring wildflowers. The Y-shaped confluence of the Colorado and Green Rivers is the heart of Canyonlands National Park. And there is where the rivers merge. It's very cool. Bryce Canyon National Park. Bryce Canyon is a spectacular display of geological formations in so southern Utah. It is the sculpted side of the Pinzuquat Plateau that is a fantasy land covered by thousands of red and orange hoodoos rock columns. These sandstone towers were left behind when layers of the surrounding rock eroded. The seeds for Bryce Canyon's dense forest of hoodoos were planted 60 million years ago when inland seas and lakes covered the area. Over eons, sediment collected on the lake's floor and congealed into rock. Later, movements in the Earth's crust pushed the Panzugant Plateau skyward, leaving its eastern edge exposed to the ravages of wind and water. The resulting multi-hued hoodoos are incredible. There's a picture of that. Monument Valley. Mythic looking monuments of red sandstone loom over the sandy desert floor of Monument Valley in Utah and Arizona. This Navajo National Tribal Park offers some of the most enduring images in the West. The formations in Monument Valley, known as. I'm just going to show you that because it's in Navajo or Valley of the Rocks, were pushed through Earth's surface by geological upheaval and then carved by winds and rivers. Um, among the most recognizable are the 300-foot-tall precarious narrow totem pole, the arch known as Ear of the Wind, and the East Mitten and West Mitten boots. So, there's the word I couldn't pronounce. I know it's backwards, but you can still, like, look. Glacier National Park. This perfect ge geometry scoring the sides of the canyons, valleys, kirks, and mountains of, Montana of Montana's Glacier National Park is a majestic work of nearly extinct glaciers. During the past 60 million years, these glaciers have melted, contracted, receded, and shaped vast areas of rock and earth in northern Montana. This is still a land of water, wind, and ice with a long, determined winter. 653 lakes and 1,000 miles of rivers and streams are shoehorned into roughly 1,600 square miles, about the size of Delaware. 
The trail system covering the rugged terrain is a hiker's paradise. Viewed from the plains east of Glacier National Park, the Rocky Mountains are stunning. They abruptly rise from 4,000 feet in elevation to more than 10,000 atop the highest peaks, and then just as precipitously drop off to about 3,000 feet at Lake McDonald in the park's southwestern quarter. To the north, Glacier connects with Waterton National Park in Alberta, Canada, and the two make up International Peace Park, a World Heritage Site. The glaciers here are receding quickly. With global temperatures on the rise, the number of ice shelves have dwindled from historic highs by 50% in recent years, and climatologists say the glaciers may be gone in the next century. Glacier National Park, named for the rivers of ice that sculpted its dramatic alpine landscape, is a national park many people say they would most like to revisit. That's cool that that's a fact. That is so pretty. Like, I haven't even visited it, and I would want to revisit. <laughs> Flathead Lake. Flathead Lake, which lies just southwest of Glacier National Park, is the largest natural freshwater lake west of the Mississippi River. It is 28 miles long and 15 miles across at its widest point. It is also 370 feet deep at its deepest point, which has helped fuel legends of a prehistoric sea creature living in its depths. Sightings of a whale-like beast have been reported for more than a century. And there's that picture of the lake without the Loch Ness Monster in it. <laughs>